Section 24 of Grey's Anatomy, Part 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne Coleman Hipkins. Anatomy of the Human Body, Part 3, by Henry Gray. The Abdominal Aorta, Part 1. 5A2. The Abdominal Aorta. Aorta Abdominalis. The Abdominal Aorta begins at the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm, in front of the lower border of the body of the last thoracic vertebra, and, descending in front of the vertebral column, ends on the body of the fourth lumbar vertebra, commonly a little to the left of the middle line. Footnote Footnote 103 Lord Lister, having accurately examined thirty bodies in order to ascertain the exact point of termination of this vessel, found it either absolutely or almost absolutely mesial in fifteen, while in thirteen it deviated more or less to the left, and in two were slightly to the right. System of Surgery, edited by T. Holmes, 2nd edition, verse 652, end of footnote. By dividing into the two common iliac arteries, it diminishes rapidly in size, in consequence of the many large branches which it gives off as it lies upon the bodies of the vertebrae. The curve which it describes is convex forward, the summit of the convexity corresponding to the third lumbar vertebra. Relations The abdominal aorta is covered anteriorly by the lesser omentum and stomach, behind which are the branches of the celiac artery and the celiac plexus. Below these, by the lienal vein, the pancreas, the left renal vein, the inferior part of the duodenum, the mesentery and aortic plexus. Posteriorly, it is separated from the lumbar vertebrae and intervertebral fibrocartilages by the anterior longitudinal ligament and left lumbar veins. On the right side, it is in relation above with the azygous vein, cisterna chile, thoracic duct, and the right cross of the diaphragm, the last separating it from the upper part of the inferior vena cava and from the right celiac ganglion. The inferior vena cava is in contact with the aorta below. On the left side are the left crusts of the diaphragm, the left celiac ganglion, the ascending part of the duodenum, and some cores of the small intestine. Collateral Circulation The collateral circulation would be carried on by the anastomoses between the internal mammary and the inferior epigastric, by the free communication between the superior and inferior mesenterics, if the ligature were placed between these vessels, or by the anastomosis between the inferior mesenteric and the internal pudinal, when, as is more common, the point of ligature is below the origin of the inferior mesenteric, and possibly by the anastomoses of the lumbar arteries with the branches of the hypogastric. Branches The branches of the abdominal aorta may be divided into three sets, visceral, parietal, and terminal. Visceral branches, celiac, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, middle suprarenals, renals, internal spermatics, ovarian in the female, parietal branches, inferior phrenics, lumbars, middle sacral, terminal branches, common iliacs. Of the visceral branches, the celiac artery and the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries are unpaired, while the suprarenals, renals, internal spermatics and ovarian are paired. Of the parietal branches, the inferior phrenics and lumbars are paired. The middle sacral is unpaired. The terminal branches are paired. The celiac artery, 
a ciliosa, celiac axis, is a short, thick trunk, about 1.25 cm in length, which arises from the front of the aorta, just below the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm, and passing nearly horizontally forward, divides into three large branches, the left gastric, the hepatic, and the splenic. It occasionally gives off one of the inferior phrenic arteries. Relations The celiac artery is covered by the lesser omentum. On the right side, it is in relation with the right celiac ganglion and the caudate process of the liver. On the left side, with the left celiac ganglion and the cardiac end of the stomach. Below, it is in relation to the upper border of the pancreas and the lienal vein. 1. The left gastric artery. A. Gastrica sinistra. Gastric or coronary artery. The smallest of the three branches of the celiac artery passes upward and to the left, posterior to the omental bursa, to the cardiac orifice of the stomach. Here it distributes branches to the esophagus, which anastomose with the aortic esophageal arteries. Others supply the cardiac part of the stomach, anastomosing with branches of the lienal artery. It then runs from left to right along the lesser curvature of the stomach to the pylorus between the layers of the lesser omentum. It gives branches to both surfaces of the stomach and anastomoses with the right gastric artery. 2. The hepatic artery, a hepatica. In the adult is intermediate in size between the left gastric and lienal. In the fetus, it is the largest of the three branches of the celiac artery. It is first directed forward and to the right, to the upper margin of the superior part of the duodenum, forming the lower boundary of the epiploic foramen, foramen of Winslow. It then crosses the portal vein anteriorly and ascends between the layers of the lesser omentum and in front of the epiploic foramen to the portal hepatis, where it divides into two branches, right and left, which supply the corresponding lobes of the liver, accompanying the ramifications of the portal vein and hepatic ducts. The hepatic artery, in its course along the right border of the lesser omentum, is in relation with the common bile duct and portal vein, the duct lying to the right of the artery and the vein behind. Its branches are right gastric, right gastric epiploic, gastroduodenal, superior pancreaticoduodenal, cystic. The right gastric artery, a gastrica dextra, pyloric artery, arises from the hepatic above the pylorus, descends to the pyloric end of the stomach and passes from right to left along its lesser curvature, supplying it with branches and anastomosing with the left gastric artery. The gastroduodenal artery, a gastroduodenalis, is a short but large branch which descends near the pylorus between the superior part of the duodenum and the neck of the pancreas and divides at the lower border of the duodenum into two branches, the right gastric epiploic and the superior pancreaticoduodenal. Previous to its division, it gives off two or three small branches to the pyloric end of the stomach and to the pancreas. The right gastric epiploic artery, a gastroepiploica dextra, runs from right to left along the greater curvature of the stomach between the layers of the greater omentum anastomosing with the left gastroepiploic branch of the lienal artery except at the pylorus where it is in contact with the stomach it lies about a finger's breadth from the greater curvature this vessel gives off numerous branches some of which are seen to supply both surfaces of the stomach while others descend to supply the greater omentum and anastomose with branches of the middle colic. The superior pancreaticoduodenal artery, a pancreaticoduodenalis superior, 
descends between the contiguous margins of the duodenum and pancreas it supplies both these organs and anastomosis with the inferior pancreatico duodenal branch of the superior mesenteric artery into the pancreatic branches of the lienal artery the cystic artery a cystica usually a branch of the right hepatic passes downward and forward along the neck of the gallbladder and divides into two branches one of which ramifies on the free surface the other on the attached surface of the gallbladder the lienal or splenic artery a lienalis the largest branch of the celiac artery is remarkable for the tortuosity of its course it passes horizontally to the left side behind the stomach and the omental bursa of the peritoneum and along the upper border of the pancreas accompanied by the lienal vein which lies below it it crosses in front of the upper part of the left kidney and on arriving near the spleen divides into branches some of which enter the hilus of that organ between the two layers of the phrenicolienal ligament to be distributed to the tissues of the spleen some are given to the pancreas while others pass to the greater curvature of the stomach between the layers of the gastrolienal ligament its branches are pancreatic short gastric left gastropiploic the pancreatic branches rami pancreatici are numerous small vessels derived from the lienal as it runs behind the upper border of the pancreas supplying its body and tail one of these larger than the rest is sometimes given off near the tail of the pancreas it runs from left to the right near the posterior surface of the gland following the course of the pancreatic duct and is called the arteria pancreatica magna these vessels anastomose with the pancreatic branches of the pancreatico duodenal and superior mesenteric arteries the short gastric arteries a a gastric a brevis vasa brevia consist of from five to seven small branches which arise from the end of the lienal artery and from its terminal divisions they pass from left to right between the layers of the gastrolienal ligament and are distributed to the greater curvature of the stomach anastomosing with the branches of the left gastric and left gastropiploic arteries the left gastropiploic artery a gastroepiploica sinistra the largest branch of the lienal runs from left to right about a finger's breadth or more from the greater curvature of the stomach between the layers of the greater omentum and anastomosis with the right gastroepiploic in its course it distributes several ascending branches to both surfaces of the stomach others descend to supply the greater omentum and anastomose with branches of the middle colic the superior mesenteric artery a mesenterica superior is a large vessel which supplies the whole length of the small intestine except the superior part of the duodenum it also supplies the casum and the ascending part of the colon and about one half of the transverse part of the colon it arises from the front of the aorta about 1.25 centimeters below the celiac artery and is crossed at its origin by the lienal vein and the neck of the pancreas it passes downward and forward anterior to the processus uncinatus of the head of the pancreas and inferior part of the duodenum and descends between the layers of the mesentery to the right iliac fossa where considerably diminished in size it anastomoses with one of its own branches viz the ileocolic in its course it crosses in front of the inferior vena cava the right ureter and psoas major and forms an arch the convexity of which is directed forward and downward to the left side the concavity backward and upward to the right it is accompanied by the superior mesenteric vein 
which lies to its right side, and it is surrounded by the superior mesenteric plexus of nerves. Branches Its branches are Inferior pancreaticoduodenal Intestinal Iliocolic Right colic Middle colic The inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery a pancreaticoduodenalis inferior is given off from the superior mesenteric or from its first intestinal branch opposite the upper border of the inferior part of the duodenum it courses to the right between the head of the pancreas and duodenum and then ascends to anastomose with the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery it distributes branches to the head of the pancreas and to the descending and inferior parts of the duodenum. The intestinal arteries, AA intestinales, vasa intestini tenis, arise from the convex side of the superior mesenteric artery. They are usually from 12 to 15 in number, and are distributed to the jejunum and ileum. They run nearly parallel with one another, between the layers of the mesentery, each vessel dividing into two branches, which unite with adjacent branches, forming a series of arches, the convexities of which are directed toward the intestine. From this first set of arches, branches arise, which unite with similar branches from above and below, and thus a second series of arches is formed. From the lower branches of the artery, a third, a fourth or even a fifth series of arches may be formed, diminishing in size the nearer they approach the intestine. In the short upper part of the mesentery, only one set of arches exists. But as the depth of the mesentery increases, second, third, fourth or even fifth groups are developed. From the terminal arches, numerous small, slight vessels arise which encircle the intestine upon which they are distributed, ramifying between its coats. From the intestinal arteries, small branches are given off to the lymph glands and other structures between the layers of the mesentery. The iliocolic artery, A. iliocolica, is the lowest branch arising from the concavity of the superior mesenteric artery. It passes downward and to the right behind the peritoneum, toward the right iliac fossa, where it divides into a superior and an inferior branch, the inferior anastomoses with the end of the superior mesenteric artery, the superior with the right colic artery. The inferior branch of the iliocolic runs toward the upper border of the iliocolic junction and supplies the following branches. A. Colic, which pass upward on the ascending colon. B. Anterior and posterior cecal, which are distributed to the front and back of the cecum. C. An appendicular artery, which descends behind the termination of the ileum and enters the mesenteriole of the veriform process. It runs near the free margin of this mesenteriole and ends in branches which supply the veriform process and D ileal, which run upward and to the left on the lower part of the ileum, and anastomose with the termination of the superior mesenteric. The right colic artery, A. colica dextra, arises from the middle of the concavity of the superior mesenteric artery, or from a stem common to it and the iliocolic. It passes to the right behind the peritoneum, and in front of the right internal spermatic, or ovarian vessels, the right ureter, and the psoas major, toward the middle of the ascending colon. Sometimes the vessel lies at a higher level and crosses the descending part of the duodenum and the lower end of the right kidney. At the colon, it divides into a descending branch, which anastomoses with the iliocolic, and an ascending branch, which anastomoses with the middle colic, these branches form arches, from the convexity of which the vessels are distributed to the ascending colon. The middle colic artery, A. colica media, 
arises from the superior mesenteric just below the pancreas and passing downward and forward between the layers of the transverse mesocolon divides into two branches right and left the former anastomoses with the right colic the latter with the left colic a branch of the inferior mesenteric the arches thus formed are placed about two fingers breadth from the transverse colon to which they distribute branches end of section twenty four recording by marianne coleman hipkins